Welcome to Counterculture. This is a video series that follows around all the people here at Abacus. We do this on a weekly basis, so you'll get to see basically a rundown of the previous week and activities and what we've been doing. Um, the idea is to kind of give you guys a glimpse as to what happens here at Abacus, what the team's like, what the people are like, how we think about things, what we're doing, what we're trying to push to change, um, and I hope that you guys find it really valuable. So, uh, check it out. All right, so me and Russell are sitting in the back of the cab and we're trying to think of content for Abacus. Um, what I was saying before I turned on the camera was that I want to be able to build the structure of the pillars of our content in a way that's focused on like multiple people at Abacus as opposed to just like a narrative around one person. And so, um, you know, Gary V is really good at making his, you know, daily V vlog and then leadering that out into multiple pieces of content, but it's all really focused and centered around him as a person. And I don't really want the Abacus content to, to be like that. Like I want to do something interesting. So leverage his capacity to, you know, do something once and then slice and dice it in a thousand different ways to, to be able to post on a daily basis. But how do we do that from multiple people's perspective? And what I've been thinking about is that, you know, there's obviously an appetite for um, complex storytelling. You know, the more TV shows we have on Netflix and what have you continue to prove that out. And you have, you know, stories and narratives that are centered around multiple people with their own character development and, and what have you. And so how do we take that appetite for that kind of content and narrative and storytelling and, and apply that to Abacus. And so me and Russell are sitting in the back of uh, an Uber uh, and we're going to try to figure that out before we get to our destination. I was asking about whether we want to, is it going to be something like very brand heavy and focused or is it going to be a bit more um, entertainment like or kind of like I, I'm wondering what the voice uh, we're trying to go for is so that's a really good point so when if I look at the how we came up with the podcast content idea uh, we actually just did an episode on this check it out on our podcast idea sex um, the idea was that it would have been really easy for us to make a um, for us to make a marketing podcast in which we talked about news and marketing and, and all that kind of stuff. But I think that that space is super crowded and saturated. And frankly, I would find it quite boring to try to make that content on a regular basis. So we came up with idea sex as a way to, you know, have interesting discussions, talk about ideas, um, meet interesting people and provide something that of genuine value that people might actually want to call you know, listen into on, on a day to day basis. Um, so even though it's like idea sex brought to you by abacus the content itself is not really um you know very brand heavy yeah. it's not self-serving to abacus it's just we want to provide genuine value um and it's a bit it's a way for us to at least you know show or express um our way of thinking and our viewpoints and our povs yeah. which i think you know in a weird roundabout way does um sell abacus uh, when I was talking to Corey, uh, our creative director the other day, he was saying that, you know, in a pitch, you're really selling the thinking and the team and the, the creative people. You're not selling the specific creative that you're, 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 you're pitching, right? right. So I think if we can sell the Abacus crew or the Abacus team um, through this content, then we will be successful uh -huh. um, in using that as a way to, to leverage business in the future. So not uh, to end, this is a really long way to say I don't want it to be super brand heavy. Hey, Ian and Jeff here. Where are we going? Shy town. Shy town. We're going to meet Facebook, talk FMP, talk some client business, and then uh, I think we're gonna have a nice, nice dinner. Eat some dinner. Eat some dinner. Hey, so Jeff and I are just walking out of the Facebook Chicago office, had some meetings, 
We talked about our FMP product. We got kind of the, the thumbs up from their tech team, which is great. Um, we had a client meeting, which went quite well. Um, what else? What else did we talk about? Anything that stood out? Oh, those are the two things. It was a very good day. Worth the trip for sure. Um, now we're going to go back to the hotel, do some work, and then have dinner. A duck, duck, goat? Yeah, duck, duck, duck goat. Duck, duck, goat. What are we talking about, huh? huh? Hey, so we just wrapped a nice dinner with Facebook. This is our rep, Francisco. He's Hi, guys. Been hanging out with us for how long? How many, like, over a year now? Yeah, how a, year, a year and a half. A year and a half. So, much like myself, he is also a Portuguese man, except he actually grew up there. I just visit. Um, how was the meetings today? How did everything go? It. Yeah, it amazing. You guys are awesome. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. What, uh, what do you think excites you the most about what we're working on and what's coming up? So I really liked uh, about the creative opportunity there. I think there's a lot of exciting things coming. Um, I like all the creative concept. I like what you guys are developing, and I'm just excited to see what's coming. You heard it here. Validation from Facebook. Pretty good. Yeah. Jeff. Yeah. 16-hour day. Yeah, it's been a long day. How did it go? It was really productive. Um, we had some great meetings. Um, moved along our special project very far, which is exciting. Um, made some new friends and some new fans. Had a great meal. Met a client. What else could you ask for? I think it was well worth the, uh, the trip. Yeah, it's a nice short jump from Toronto to Chicago, so uh, that's a nice little easy trip. It's 9 a.m. Just coming back from a creative feedback meeting this morning. Um, heading back up to the hotel, meet up with Jeff. Uh, we're gonna go have breakfast now and uh, plan the rest of our day before we head back to Toronto. So, uh, to, to digress a little bit, I really value internships. I think they're super important. So, my background before advertising, I worked in the music industry. And if there's ever like a hack to get into the business, it was through an internship. I mean, most companies don't have a lot of resources. They're not hiring people. If they hire people, they're gonna hire someone for specific specific skill set or, or what have you. And so internships are a way for you to get around like industry vets and leech knowledge off of them and actually become a valuable player in, in the industry and I think that the same is very true to advertising. I think advertising, um, just due to the nature of the corporate uh, machine behind it, has far more resources to bring on um, interns and have actual intern programs and a lot of those internships are paid. But I think even on like just the free interning, like I will show up and work for you for free so that I can be a part of this world and get a line of sight, I think is, is super important. Um, and so there's been some shifts in regulations in Canada. You have to pay interns now, which I think is, is, is great on the one hand. I think it's restrictive to startups and smaller companies on the other hand. Um, but yeah, I think internships are great. So when we brought on Russ, when I was talking to him, um, I was really interested in having somebody come into the office to actually help us make content for Abacus in specific. And so um, I knew he was into watching the Gary Vee stuff and I had seen some content that he made with his friends. And I was like, all right, yo, you want to come be our, our D-Rock, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so here you go. He's here making content. And I think we're, we're in the process of really stepping that up right now. So, you know, we've been pretty good at making content. We've had a pretty, you know, steady blog. We've been doing the podcast. But it's been, it's been a slow start um, over the past year and a half, I guess. And I, I really want us to double down on it right now. I've been using the excuse of like shoemaker syndrome like we're so busy making shoes for everybody else we don't have time to make shoes for ourselves right um but i think that that's actually just an excuse and that we need to drink our own kool-aid and go all in on content because a lot of our leads uh refer to our content as ways that they found us so i think it actually has a lot of um a lot more value um, even in the short term than, than maybe we've, we've perceived it to have. And so it's worth the investment. And as long as we're doing it alongside of what we'd normally be doing any other day, I think that there's very low, um, low risk and not a lot to lose. So all that to say, Russ is killing it and he's great. 
and when he goes back to school, I'm gonna have to convince him to hang around.